these dynamic duos, Max Crosby, Chandler Jones, uh, you know, Chris Jones, Frank Clark, got Khalil Mack and Bosa, all these guys, and, and they're putting pass rush as a premium. So I'm interested as to why you have Thibodeau falling all the way to seven when we've seen these teams trying to load up on pass rushes. I'm sure his marketing agent is, is happy to be in the Big Apple or possibly be in the Big Apple, but why do you have him falling so low to number seven? First, got great first step quickness, and that the strength is incredible, but, but, Needs to develop a secondary pass rush move or some pass rush moves in general, Robert. And then you talk about a little stiff. He doesn't have the bend of anywhere near a Miles Garrett. So that's why you know, I think you're going to see him drop just a bit. Not like he's going to drop into the 10 15 range, but I think for the Giants looking for a guy who's going to bring it every play, that's what he's going to have to prove in the NFL. Bring it every play, maximize what everything he does. He's got incredible strength. I tell you, he can get after it. He can beat you out of your stance. And I think he's the kind of guy, I think he's not Miles Garrett. He's not what Clowney was coming out, but he's going to go I think in that seven range of the Giants. All right Marcus it's your turn. What's uh, Mel got you thinking about in the mock 3.0? <laughs> Mel know, Mel know damn well every year I'm going to ask him about an LSU guy, okay? And here's yep. the deal. 10 and 11, you got Sauce Gardner and Derek Stingley going back to back, Mel. And I, I know Derek's situation with the past two years. And based off of that film, we, I'm, I'm just asking purely talent, Mel. How do you separate the two? I know you probably have them separated because Sauce at played and, and has the most recent film. But when it comes to the ability and what you project, how do you deviate between both of these guys? If you would just take 2019, Marcus, we was 17 when he showed up on that LSU campus. 17. Okay, and he had Jamar Chase. He had all those great players. He had those battles in practice with Chase. He was unbelievable. He was, I thought, going to be the number one, number two pick. He was Patrick Peterson was the number yeah. one player on my board when he came out. I thought Derek Stingley Jr. would be the number one player on my board. Last two years, COVID, obviously the injury affected him. So I think here's a guy you got to take a leap of faith with. And he can basically recapture what we saw when he was only an 18-year-old freshman and do exactly that be that lockdown corner Gardner comes in with momentum nine career interceptions he's got great length he went through the process clean whereas Derek Stingley Jr. did not I'm going to go with Derek Stingley Jr. as my number one corner but you're splitting hairs there that's a that's going to be a battle all the way up to the end and obviously pro day and making sure he's healthy yeah. coming off Liz Frank is going to be critical for Derek Stingley Jr. Yeah and whichever one of those cornerbacks goes ahead of the other it's just going to motivate the other one that much more it's going to be fun to watch those guys yeah. at the next level <laughs> now one of my favorite players in this draft Jamison Williams <laughs> Williams. He's coming off an ACL injury, but you still have him going number 21 to the Patriots, which, geez, if he was healthy, you'd say, what a steal. What are you hearing on Williams? That's what you have to go with what your intel says, Laura. And the intel, my friends in the NFL I spoke to, because I don't make those picks. Where's Jamison? I got I got first round coming back when mm. Jamison Williams. It's great to see. He had that ACL in the national championship game, a game I thought he they would have won Alabama had he been healthy for four quarters. He took the top off the defense in just about every game. He is a warrior, and that's what I love about this kid. He battles. He's all about team. You notice when Mechie the third or another receiver would catch a touchdown, he was the first one over to congratulate. Not disappointed that it wasn't me, okay? He's not a me and an I. He's a we and an us. I love Jamison Williams, and I think Bill Belichick with that Saban Belichick connection with New England would be a team that would be, I think, very, 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 very strong in terms of feeling great about bringing him in. And ironically, yeah. the Packers at 22 are right behind them. Mm. Then again, at 28, so the Packers for the first time in Aaron Rodgers' history <laughs> would possibly look at a Jamison Williams as well, who will be ready for that stretch run going into a Super Bowl when he's getting back to full they strength should. maybe in November. There you go. Hey, you know, one other thing too about when Mechie went down for Alabama, you also saw Jameson Williams get a more increased role in that Alabama offense, running some more routes, doing some more yep. things, and just being that speedster guy who could sort of stretch the field. So you see some. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN.